Welcome everybody and thanks for watching. I'm Cliff and this is what in the What in the uh, Okay, that was weird. Um where was I? Oh yeah, so who's Scott? Well, Scott is a uh, well-known YouTuber on a channel called Kentucky Ballistics. And today's video is about Scott and how he almost died and was saved by a thumb. Yep, you heard me. Hey, saved his life. But first, before we get into it, a little history about Scott and what led him to his successful YouTube journey. After dabbling as a gun enthusiast and as a hobby for quite some time before his YouTube channel really began to take off, Scott is a former Kentucky State Trooper and served on the force for at least six to seven years from what I've been able to determine. He left the force in 2018 and pursued his career as a full-time YouTuber after gaining 280,000 YouTube subscribers. And yes, he is married with children. Sorry ladies, he's taken. <laughs> Scott's law enforcement career began in 2012. He did work for approximately three agencies in total before leaving law enforcement as a full-fledged YouTuber. His videos often begin with humorous intros, which involve several funny characters, mostly played by himself. Such as, well, there's Tactical T-Rex, Dim-Winded and Quirky Scooter, a Genie, and then there's W. Uh, well, the Mr. Fix-It guy, or, well, actually, Mr. Break-It. Bob from Big Boomsticks, and quite a few more. Scott has an extreme dislike for eggplant. Next up is some eggplant. Because nobody likes eggplant! And we cannot forget about watermelon time, when Scott suddenly develops an uncontrollable urge for destroying watermelons. I think you know what time it is. It's watermelon time. <laughs> I totally get the aversion to eggplant, but what did watermelons ever do to you, Scott? If you should ever happen to run across Scott anywhere out and about, please, whatever you do, do not ever ask him what time it is. Kentucky Ballistics currently has over 4.11 million subscribers. Well, at least when I recorded this video. That's a lot. Hey, Scott, want to trade? On April 9th, 2021, Scott began recording a shooting video as he normally would. He was firing rounds from a 50 caliber rifle. It was a Serbu RN50 to be exact, which fires a 50 BMG round. The Serbu RN50 is a single shot rifle. For this particular rifle, you must cock the hammer back, break open the action, unscrew the breech cap to access the rifle's bore, and then load a round. Screw the cap back on, close the action, fire the shot, break open the action, rinse and repeat. Then you have to repeat the same process to unload the rifle and then to reload it for each round. Scott was also having trouble pulling the spent cartridges out of the bore, which is not usual, but these rounds were different. They were called slap rounds. What's a slap round? Glad you asked. A 50 caliber slap round is a type of high powered ammunition designed for use in weapons that are chambered in a 50 BMG. It features a unique sable design that allows the projectile to travel at higher velocities, resulting in increased penetration. That's what she said! Another good one! You're on fire. And accuracy. Slap rounds were designed for use against lightly armored vehicles and enemy aircraft and were developed by the Marine Corps during the mid to late 1980s and was approved for service in the 1990s during Operation Desert Storm. Slap stands for Sabod Light Armor Penetrator. That's what she said! A 50 cal is short for 50 caliber, 
It refers to a bullet cartridge that measures 5 inches in diameter. This large caliber is commonly used in military firearms. For its long range and penetrating capability, Scott obtained these rounds from an inadvertent unreliable source at an unknown location. As mentioned earlier while firing these rounds, he noticed that they were much louder than what he was used to hearing and that the, he was having a challenging time removing the spent cartridges, which means the brass was expanding much more than what it should. The flash from each shot was also much larger than normal from a 50 caliber round. But Scott did not notice because the flash only lasts a split second and is hard to see, especially in the daytime. The last lap round he fired was filled with a lot more gunpowder than what it should have been, causing the round to explode. With the gases having nowhere to escape, the gases couldn't get around the bullet fast enough while expanding inside the rifle's bore. This in turn caused the rifle to explode quite literally in his face. Scott sustained multiple immediate and severe life-threatening injuries to his neck, chest, face, left hand, and was losing a lot of blood very quickly. He lacerated the jugular vein on the right side of his neck and his lung was punctured. The less severe injuries were a broken right orbital eye socket and two fingers on his left hand. Fortunately for him, Scott had his dad with him that day, Scott Sr. His dad ran over to him and informed him that he was losing a lot of blood and fast. His dad put his thumb in the hole in Scott's neck to control the severe bleeding. Scott's dad then told him to put his thumb in his neck. Scott wrapped his thumb in a shirt, then put it in his neck and pinched off the jugular vein. While his dad rushed over to the truck in preparation in transporting Scott to the hospital. Scott made it over to the truck on his own and later could not remember how he made it to the truck and thought his dad carried him. After Scott got into the truck, his dad sped off and as Scott put it in his own words. Pollen tail into tail. Can you believe this? Scott was not only to hold himself together in many ways, but he was also cognitive enough to call 911 and start an ambulance heading his way. That is some serious badassery right there. Not very many people would have been able to pull it off or stay calm enough to think about any of that. Most people would have panicked and end up bleeding to death. Scott said what kept him from losing consciousness and ultimately dying was that he focused on his kids. Anyway, they met with the inbound ambulance and was transported the rest of the way to the hospital. After Scott made it to the hospital, the emergency medical staff were able to control the bleeding and discovered that Scott had a collapsed blood-filled punctured lung upon taking an x-ray of his chest after he had complained that he had an exceedingly difficult time breathing. After Scott's lung had been reinflated by inserting a metal rod through the right side of his rib cage, ouch. They wanted him to take his thumb out of his neck, which he refused to do so at first. But the medical staff told him that they needed him to remove his thumb so they could uh, fix it. After Scott pulled his thumb out of his neck, that was when he noticed the damage to his left hand. Subsequently, Scott was airlifted to Vanderbilt University Medical Center in Nashville, Tennessee, where he received the rapid medical care that he needed. It was only after he was discharged from the hospital and was well enough to review the footage of his accident. Scott then noticed the large flash from the rifle, but only when he reviewed the camera footage in slow motion. When Scott shared his footage of the incident, along with the video footage on YouTube of the accident, he described the situation, everything he had participated in with regards to the video, and the events that led up to the catastrophic failure, all in great detail, and how he made it to the hospital. Scott continued talking in his video about firing off all the rounds, and showed normal speed footage as well as low speed footage of the disastrous last round that just about did him in. It's always the last one. You ever notice that? Whenever you're working on or doing something, it's always the little last part that gives you the hardest time. Well, in Scott's case, this last slap round was the one that would unfortunately throw his world into absolute chaos. And not to mention what his friends and family went through, wondering if he was going to survive or not and praying for the best possible outcome. Instead of a day of innocent fun while recording a YouTube video. He ended up being rushed to the hospital. This video just goes to show you how fast your life can change in an instant, regardless of whatever it is you're doing. Scott also, at the time, designed a new shirt. If you would like to buy one, I will post a link to that in the description below. Scott got the idea of designing the shirt from his wife. Okay, let's get into the video. As you can see, Scott is sitting at the table. He is getting ready to take the final shot for his channel in preparation of ending his video and calling it the day. 
Then everything went sideways real fast. Wow, that is a, that's a tough video to watch. It really is. Yikes. I'm just glad he's okay, recovered well, and is back to creating entertaining content for the rest of us to enjoy. Let's review that again through his slow motion footage. Look at that, even in slow motion, everything happened in a blink of an eye. On several occasions, there have been hidden treasures in some of the targets that he would shoot. Upon investigating them, he would find that it's just a mere piece of paper with a message on it. Here we go. Huh. That is about the weirdest misfire I have ever had. Hit that subscribe button. Speaking of that, While Scott was recovering at home and obviously unable to make YouTube videos and most likely stressing out over how he would pay the bills while unable to earn income with fresh content, a group of amazing friends and fellow YouTubers came to the rescue and oh boy did they ever help out in a massive way. They all created videos on behalf of Kentucky Ballistics in their own unique and humorously entertaining way. Matt from Demolition Ranch created a video called Demolition Ballistics. Brandon Herrera created a video called Kentucky Herrera. Cody from Donut Operator created a video called Donut Ballistics. Edwin Sarkissian made one called Kentucky Sarkissian. Brandon from Texas Plinking made one called Kentucky Plinking. Granger Smith recorded Earl Dibbles Ballistics. Mr. Guns and Gear did Ballistics and Gear, FAF. FAF is in reference to Kentucky Ballistics Full Auto Friday. And Warrior Poet Society made a video on Scott's behalf called Kentucky Poet Society. I will post a link to the videos if you haven't already watched them and a link to each of their channels in the description below. Ever since his horrible accident, Scott started making videos about when guns go boom. He would purposely load firearms with ammunition that contain excessive amounts of gunpowder to document on video the amount of damage it would cause. But before loading the firearm with the extra spicy ammo, he would safely place the firearm in a designated area with a couple cameras positioned to record the firearm that would be placed in a semi-enclosed structure contained by cinder blocks and a clear Lexan polycarbonate roof. He would often place a ballistics gelatin skeletonized mold in the shape of a human head and hands near where the proverbial person's head and hands would be when someone would fire that type of weapon. Then Scott would tie a string to a trigger, run the string to a safe distance and behind his truck. After that, he would carefully load the firearm and would take cover behind his truck and gently pull the string until the firearm discharged and every time it was much louder than what it would normally be. After a few laughs, he would then go and take a look at the damage and piece together what used to be a functioning firearm turned paperweight. That will do it for this video. I hope I kept you entertained. If I did, please do not forget to like and subscribe and punch that little bell icon right in the nose so that you will be notified whenever I post a new video. Thank you for watching.